The Whitby Historical Society respectfully acknowledges that the Lind House Museum, the Warren General Store, and Clarissa Lynn's Heritage Gardens are situated on the traditional territories of the Mississauga of Scugog Island's First Nations, and we acknowledge and support the First Nations as stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity. We continue to support them on a path toward truth and reconciliation. In October 1966, a small group of Whitby residents formed a plan to establish a historical society coinciding with Canada's centennial. Their intention was to promote interest in Whitby history and create a museum of artifacts from local First Nations settlers and the Whitby community. The group consisted of Helen Audrey Ingram, Constant Hope Muckle, Helen Cecilia Jeffrey, Richard Gibbon Fallou, Otto Alfred Vaughn, Louis Alfred Guy Winter, and Adele Ruddy. Lawyer Donald Ruddy was very interested but too ill to participate, so he appointed his wife Adele to represent him as a charter director. An application was made to the province of Ontario for a charter of incorporation as the Whitby Historical Society. A meeting was held at Henry Street High School and Brian Winter, the son of Guy Winter, was signed as member number one and the youngest member. In May of that year, the start of a long effort to secure housing for an artifact collection and museum space began. Lawyer Duncan McIntyre represented the Whitby Historical Society's bid to acquire the Golding Store as a museum site. The attempt failed and the store was later demolished. By December 1967, the Whitby Historical Society opened a museum space in a small room in the Centennial Building using display cases and counters from the Golding Store. Brian Winter established the Whitby Archives in a small broom closet. The first special exhibit was a collection of historic clocks secured by Dick Velour. The official seal and papers of the incorporation were granted to the Whitby Historical Society on May 28, 1968. The board of directors were Helen Ingram, President, Rick Velour, Vice President, and Alfred Vaughn, Treasurer. Directors were Adele Ruddy, Guy Winter, Duncan McIntyre, and Hope Muckle. The town of Whitby and the township of Whitby amalgamated to form a new municipality in 1968, and in honour of this occasion, the newly incorporated Whitby Historical Society held a reception in the Centennial Building. In 1969, Brian Winter wrote to Leon Weinstein, president of Loblaw's Grocerias Company Limited, owner of the property where the Lind House was located, asking it be donated to the Society as a museum. In the meantime, that October, the board proposed using the Uptown Station on Hickory Street, but the bid was denied. In 1970, a one-of-a-kind 1867 Joseph Rayner piano was donated to the Society by an anonymous donor. The WHS had attempted to fundraise to purchase the piano, but didn't make their goal. 
It was later revealed that Norman Irwin of Red Wing Orchard purchased the piano as a donation. The piano is still on display today in the Lind House Music Room and is one of the most popular artifacts. The museum, along with its artifacts, was later moved to the Myrtle Temperance Hall where it remained until June 1972. The hall was later demolished in 1978. In 1972, Leon Weinstein agreed to donate the Lind House, located at Highway 2 and Dillier. The donation, however, was conditional on it being moved to another location within a specified time. The Whitby Historical Society members and volunteers began restoring the home, fundraising for land, and eventually moved into the house in 1972 and occupied it until 1986. The board of directors at the time included Douglas Anderson, Margaret Voice, and Roderick Anjavar, who led the restoration and search for a permanent location or a way for the house to remain on the original lands. In 1974, the Whitby archives began microfilming Whitby newspapers from 1850 to 1917, specializing in genealogy and photocopying and cataloging historic photographs and documents. Brian Winter, who had established the archives in 1968, was named the official Town of Whitby archivist by the Whitby Town Council. In 1973, he became the youngest person to receive the prestigious Peter Perry Award for his work on the Whitby Archives. The Whitby Historical Society focused its efforts on maintaining the museum at Lind House, showcasing artifacts and endeavoring to secure its future. A large exhibit of historic photographs was held at the County Town Carnival Trade Fair that year. The Whitby Historical Society remained at Lind House until 1986. Even though considerable funds had been raised, it was not enough to relocate the building. Negotiations continued with Loblaws, the town, and Len Cullen, who offered to move the house to Cullen Gardens in North Whitby. His offer was accepted, and in August 1986, it was agreed the Lind House was to be moved to this site. In July, right before the move, a fire broke out in the upstairs closet of, at the house. Margaret Boyce, who lived nearby, noticed the smoke coming from the direction of the museum and immediately used the volunteer phone tree to summon several volunteers to help. The volunteers and a number of high school students quickly arrived and began removing artifacts together with firefighters and police. Bill Oyagi, the president of the society, told reporters that the fire did not go through the roof to the attic where clothing belonging to the Lind family was stored because the house was so well built. He said the damage was caused mostly by smoke outside the room. A few artifacts were unfortunately lost and damaged by the smoke. Artifacts removed from the house fire were sent to numerous private homes for temporary safekeeping. And in 1987, the Whitby Historical Society began the restoration and cleaning of the damaged pieces. Fortunately, the house could still be moved to Cullen Gardens as scheduled. Len Cullen restored Lynn House to the way it looked in the 1850s and furnished it with new antiques at a cost of $2 million. When it was ready to open, Mr. Cullen gave the society the opportunity to provide house tours, but the hours required were beyond the scope of the volunteers. He therefore fitted the house with its well-known animated mannequins that lived on in people's memories today. It was a delight for visitors until Cullen Gardens closed in 2005 and is memorialized on the statue of Len Cullen that stands at the site today. In 1989, the Whitby Historical Society was given a storefront by Kendallwood Plaza at no charge to be used as a temporary museum. 
In the same year, the Whitby Clerk's Department took over the management of the Whitby Historical Society archives, continuing to house these records in the Centennial Building. The museum remained at Kendallwood until 1992. From 1992 to 2004, only a small number of the original Whitby Historical Society members were left to carry on. The collection was put in storage where it remained for 12 years. The money previously raised to move the house was used to pay for storage until it was entirely depleted. The Whitby Historical Society maintained regular meetings with a board of directors who managed the collection. It was only through the efforts of a few dedicated people who would not give up that a way was found to once again open a museum. Margaret Voice applied for a grant from the Whitby Lions Club. The society was given enough seed money to pay rent and to operate for one year. Artifacts were clean and restored after being in storage so long, and in June 2004, the collection was moved to the historic London House building at 123 Brock Street South. The London House was built circa 1878 after the Great Fire of October 16, 1877, which wiped out many buildings on Brock Street in Whitby. Margaret and Bernard Boyce obtained a permit for bingo funds. Volunteers took turns doing shifts at the bingo hall, and in 2005, the Whitby History Museum and Children's Centre opened for business, offering tours and children's programs. Board members at the time included Doug Anderson, President, Margaret Boyce, Vice President, Irene Clark, Secretary, and Joan Stevens, Treasurer. Other members included Bernard Boyce, Jane Snyder, Carol Wood, Ruth Holdsworth, Pat Embry, Lloyd Embry, Karen Shepard, Kathy Velour, Breck Stewart, Trina Astor Stewart, David Chambers, Monica Lawlor, and Vonnie Gill. During Whitby's sesquicentennial in 2005, Margaret Boyce applied for and secured an Ontario Trillium Foundation grant. The much-needed grant money contributed to goals such as artifact cataloging and school visits. It also allowed the Society to create a booklet for school children. In honour of Queen Elizabeth's 80th birthday in 2006, the Whitby Historical Society gave each school child from kindergarten to grade 6 a copy of the booklet, which amounted to over 9,000 distributed. In January 2006, the Cullen Garden property was sold to the town of Whitby and Lind House's future was once again uncertain. In February 2008, the Whitby Historical Society held its 40th Anniversary Heritage Ball at the Royal Ashburn Golf Club. The guest speaker was the Honourable Jim Abbott, MP Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Canadian Heritage and Privy Council. Garth Riley acted as Master of Ceremonies, Mayor Pat Perkins and honoured guests Bridget Nickerson, Miss Canada 2010, were in attendance. On June 13, the Ontario Historical Society presented Brian Winter with the Lifetime Achievement Award and Margaret Boyce, then president of the Whitby Historical Society, with a Certificate of Merit Award for her 25 years of dedicated service to the preservation of history. In February of 2011, David Chambers, Vice President, and Trina Astor Stewart, Board Member, met with Peter LaBelle, Director of Community Marketing Services with the Town of Whitby, to discuss Lind House's future. Mr. LaBelle suggested that the Society put together an offer to operate the house as a museum once again. In the meantime, the Society received two New Horizon for Seniors grants, which were used to produce the Whitby Seniors' Memories of the Past and a Stitch in Time project, recording stories told by local residents. An Artisans Guild was established to engage members in using and sharing their artistic talents in order to create a volunteer showcase display for the 2009 Heritage Day event. Certificates were presented to those who volunteered to contribute their work. 
Margaret Boyce, WHS president, passed away suddenly in the fall of 2011, a great loss to the Whitby Historical Society and to the community. The Whitby Historical Museum continued to operate at 123 Brock Street South, but operating funds were quickly depleting. By January 2013, there were only enough funds for either six months' rent or to pack up artifacts and move them into storage once again. It was decided to move the collection into storage. David Chambers, Trina Astor Stewart, and Breck Stewart continued negotiations with the town of Whitby regarding a possible move to the Lind House. They held a membership drive at the Whitby Library. 22 people were in attendance and offered their assistance if the museum reopened. In May of 2013, Margaret Clayton, chair of the LACAC Heritage Whitby, made a delegation to town council regarding the Cullen Heritage buildings. Ms. Clayton reported the Lind House had only been open to the public for special events during the past few years, including a Christmas tour in 2006 by the WHS, but had generated great recognition as an 1812-era home. Ms. Clayton stated it would be preferable to relocate Lind House to other public lands in Cullen Park. However, if this was not possible, LACAC would support the move of Lindhouse to Brock and Burns Street as a heritage museum. Resolution number 233-13 was moved by Councillor M and seconded by Councillor Cole. In December 2013, the Lind House was moved by the town of Whitby to its current location in Centennial Park at Brock and Burn Street. Imagine how amazed Jabez Lynn would have been to know that 200 years later, the house he built would travel along the roads he helped to construct. Thousands of people lined the streets of Whitby to watch. The Lind House resides in many residents' hearts as Whitby's first home. By this time, the Whitby Historical Society consisted of only a five-member board. David Chambers, President, Trina Astor Stewart, Vice President, Breck Stewart, Secretary Treasurer, with Gloria Merker and Monica Lawler as directors. It was realized that managing the Lind House as a museum would be impossible unless funding was secured. An application was submitted to the Durham Community Foundation for $100,000 in funds. Talks continued throughout 2014 with the town of Whitby regarding the operation of the Lind House with help from Howard Smith, a non-profit consultant, and Smith Chapel Marsh and Valander Accounting, acting as independent counsel for WHS in negotiations with the town of Whitby. In 2015, an operating agreement was reached. A generous, anonymous donor family established a legacy fund, providing ongoing funding, which allowed the Whitby Historical Society to once again operate the Lind House Museum. Planning meetings and recruiting volunteers began. In 2015, Kristen Allum, a museum studies graduate, was hired as the first executive director for the museum, directed by the WHS liaison, Trina Astor Stewart. Artifacts from the Cullen Garden collection arrived and construction by the town continued through the summer and fall. Boxes from the Cullen collection were unpacked and artifacts catalogued. Renovations took place in the former tourism office located beside the Lind House, which is now known as the Warren General Store. The Whitby Station Gallery asked the Society to include the Lind House in its Christmas open house tour. Michael Penny of Penny & Company was chosen by the gallery to provide the Christmas decorations. There was just one problem. Unpacked boxes of artifacts filled every space available in both the Lind House and the Warren General Store buildings, and the furnishings had not yet been positioned. It seemed an impossible task, but Trina Astor Stewart spoke with Michael Penny, and he immediately brought his entire store staff to start work. 
on Saturday, March 14th, as part of the Whitby Station Gallery Christmas Home Tour, over 600 people went through the Lind House for the first time since its move to the new location. Volunteers staffed each room, pointing out the beautiful 1800s inspired decorations and talking with visitors. The official grand opening of the Lind House Museum took place on November 24, 2015, with a ribbon cutting ceremony by Mayor Don Mitchell and David Chambers, WHS President. The reception and tour of the Lind House were also attended by Lauren Cole, Regional Councillor, Liam Nichols, the representative for Selena Caesar Chavez, MP, members of the Town of Whitby Council, five Whitby Historical Society board members, staff, volunteers, and members of the community. On November 28th, the first Lind House Museum Christmas tour was held. The Joseph Picard archaeological display depicting the Wendat First Nations settlement was showcased in the Warren General Store for the first time, and Brian Winter was on hand to speak with visitors about his book, Chronicles of a County Town, Whitby Past and Present. In 2016, Monica Effenberger, a museum study graduate, was hired as assistant curator. Numerous special events took place as well as tours of Lind House and the Society adopted its first constitution and set of bylaws. A Lind descendant, Emily Johnson Harton, was married in Whitby and photographed at Lind House Museum in March 2017. In May, the first live history theatre production, Mary's Odyssey, took place. Elements of Whitby's history were woven into the play. New costumes were purchased for tour volunteers in time for Whitby Doors Open Tours. An Ontario Trillium Foundation Seed Grant was awarded for new school programming. In May, a special event celebrating the Whitby Historical Society's 50th anniversary was held with 103 volunteers and members in attendance. And in August, Dr. Peter Calgren of the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto donated several artifacts from his personal collection, including an 1815 Mason Blue Willow tea set similar to what Mrs. Clarissa Lind might have used when she lived in the house. Dr. Kellegren toured the museum displays and storage areas, offering many insights for future planning. That December, the first Christmas candlelight tours were held. Gwen Tuman, a WHS volunteer, applied for a grant to create the Clarissa Lind Heritage Gardens, and on April 25, 2018, a presentation of the TD Friends of the Environment Foundation Grant Award was made. With extensive research to ensure authenticity of a typical kitchen garden of the early 1800s, Eric Tuman and Ed Campbell began work. Clarissa Lynn's Heritage Kitchen Garden boasts seven plots featuring medicinal plants, herbs, vegetables, and plants for dyes and decorative purposes. The garden site includes expelliar pears and apples along the fences. Vegetables are harvested in the fall and preserved by volunteers. Clarissa Lynn's Heritage Kitchen Garden ensures a legacy with which to teach people about the plants, their uses, history, and meaning. Gardens tell important stories about the people who tended them and offer a significant glimpse into the past by reflecting the society in which they were created. From September 28th to 30th, the Whitby Historical Society participated in Culture Days and Whitby Open Streets with the War of 1812 reenactment by the 29th Regiment of Foot Grenadier Company, a reenactment of General Sir Isaac Brock's visit to the Lind House was the event's theme. Visitors were regaled on Friday and Saturday with an entire 1812 encampment, open fire cooking and musket demonstrations. Okay. 
But by November 2018, the Whitby Historical Society was once again at risk of dissolving due to illness and resignations of the board members. However, due to the recruitment of new community members, a fresh board was elected at the AGM of that year. Since then, the WHS has undergone a significant revival. Presently, the WHS has a governing board of eight directors, Julie Ditta, President, Jean Preston, Treasurer, Carolyn Johnson, Secretary, with directors Joanne Davidson, Marilyn Burbage, Rick Bulldog, Audrey Atkinson, and Mitchell Daniels. In March of 2019, the board of directors hired Lisa Johnson as museum manager, whose job it is to ensure the implementation of the Whitby Historical Society's policies, its vision and goals, and to manage the day-to-day -day operation of the Lind House Museum and Warren General Store. Numerous ratifications have been made to update the WHS Constitution and Bylaws and a clear vision, statement and mandate established. The mission of the present board respects the intentions originally laid out in the Articles of Incorporation from 1968 to promote public interest in the history of the town of Whitby and area and in the Constitution and Bylaws of 2016 to empower citizens' participation in activities and programming that support lifelong learning and the present reality as a cultural hub in the community and as operators of the Lind House Museum. As part of the revitalization, websites for the Whitby Historical Society and the Lind House Museum have been revamped, a new WHS logo created, a strong social media presence on Facebook and Instagram established, along with a YouTube channel. The board participated vigorously in the town of Whitby's recent cultural plan process, resulting with the Lind House recognized as one of four major cultural assets for the town. With continued support from the Durham Community Foundation Legacy Fund and additional funds from the anonymous donor family, OLG Delta Bingo Pickering, and revenue from Warren General Store and other fundraising endeavors, the Whitby Historical Society has a secure future. In 2021, the Whitby Historical Society was the recipient of two Ontario Trillium Grants, the Resilient Communities Grant and the Community Building Fund Grant. The intention of the Resilient Communities Grant is to assist with pivoting programming in response to COVID-19 to a 24 video series called Lessons from Lindhouse. Funding from Delta Bingo and the Trillium Foundation provided volunteers new authentic costumes depicting the styles of the 1850s to 1860s. The house has undergone many enhancements in the last two years, including the purchase of era-appropriate lamps to light evening events, fire grates, new drapery and flower arrangements typical of the Victorian period. Most recently, the boys' room, arranged by Lisa Johnson with the help of volunteers, has been added to the tour, allowing us to share the story of young Sylvester and Hawkins Lynn's days as dispatch writers in the War of 1812. The Whitby Historical Society contracted the installation of a special display shed for the O'Donovan Cutter Sleigh and once again, with help from Rick and Raven, the shed has been painted, lined with cedar, and lighting installed. Community engagement and educational program continues to be a central mission of the Whitby Historical Society, including the Tea in History speaker series, Art in the Garden, the first ever steampunk festival in Durham Region, reenactments, can and candlelight tours. Kids camps, workshops, music and mystic nights, live history theatre, writer in residence programs, newsletters featuring local historical content, and history in the park displays are all ways the Whitby Historical Society keeps history alive. As part of its commitment to diversity, the Whitby Historical Society honoured Black History Month for the first time in February 2020, celebrating the many achievements and contributions of Black Canadians who have done so much to make Canada the culturally diverse and prosperous nation it is today. 
The Whitby Historical Society has observed International Women's Day the last three years, celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. In 2021, the WHS acknowledged Truth and Reconciliation Day, honouring the lost children and survivors of residential schools, their families and communities. The WHS aims to think globally but act locally. Providing community engagement and education and operating the Lindhouse Museum is a testament to the endurance of the Whitby Historical Society and the significance of culture and heritage in enhancing a sense of well-being, belonging and connection to community for the residents of Whitby. Going forward, the WHS will continue to support ways for the community to interact more closely with the collection that tells the history and stories of Whitby.